To talk more about what's being called the newest form of warfare and how it can affect the rights of everyday U.S. citizens, David Seaman, journalist and host of the DL Show, joins us now. Hi there, David. Um, so the Pentagon now says they can respond to cyber attacks with physical attacks. In other words, you mess with our cybersecurity, bombing you is an option. How, how do you feel about this? Uh, first of all, thanks for having me back on the show, Liz. Uh, I think the term cyber terrorism is a real misnomer. It's something to get the sheeple behind this ridiculous idea that you fight hackers with physical force, with drones that drop bombs, and with hit squads that literally come into your apartment and could potentially execute you in the middle of the night. Uh, it's such a ridiculous response to what amounts to uh, defacing government agency websites. If you take down a government agency's website, that is not terrorism. You're not killing anybody. You're not harming anybody. You're creating an inconvenience, to be sure. And it's definitely a criminal activity, uh, but it is not terrorism. And the same applies to, uh, you know, leaked documents that surface online on some of these download networks that we're, we're seeing around the world uh, on things like BitTorrent. That's not terrorism. That's getting information out there. And I think the government is terrified of the facts getting out to the average person. That's what they're really afraid of here. Um, now, this fear is mostly aimed toward foreign hackers, um, but is there a risk that the hackers right here at home can face similar consequences? I think there is that fear, and I think what we're seeing with groups like Anonymous and organizations like WikiLeaks and the various Occupy protests that are popping up around the world is that these movements are transnational. If you have an email account or, uh, you know, AOL or whatever, not AOL, uh, instant messenger, you can be in touch with somebody in Africa or in Europe. So uh, that's what the government is worried about. And I don't think they're going to respect borders all that much when it comes to uh, cyber terrorism. If there's a threat, they're going to label it as terrorism and they're going to go after it. And speaking of anonymous, the National Security Agency now says that the hacktivist group um, will, in a couple of years, be able to, um, or be capable of hacking into U.S. power grids, which could disrupt power. Anonymous today responded to this on Twitter. Um, let's take a look at some of their tweets. Um, they said, uh, you know, the NSA director warns that Anonymous could soon cause limited power outages. Um, and, you know, their response is this is fear mongering at its best. Um, second tweet there why would um, Anonymous shut off a power grid? There are people on life support, other vital services that rely on it. Try again, NSA. And that is with the hashtag fear mongering. And another tweet there um, the NSA's reprehensible fear mongering and attempts to discredit Anonymous are transparent and baseless. Now, Anonymous. Well, I mean, not. Uh, Not to mention the fact that why would they cut off their power uh, if that's how they stay in touch with their followers is through email. Exactly. And, through and so far, Anonymous has been used like to make uh, political purposes, um, to make political statements. Um, why then would they target civilians? Uh, where is the motivation there? Yeah, it, it does seem like fear mongering to me. I don't know the specifics of what the NSA was saying, but uh, I think whenever you shut down information, uh, sharing whenever you shut that down and whenever you threaten uh, you know activist groups whether they be electronic or people out in the street protesting something if you threaten that with a military response and uh, physical violence on the part of the government I don't think that's acceptable uh, we're seeing them label these sorts of groups as cyber terrorism and we're seeing when somebody gets off their computer and they go out into the street and become part of a peaceful protest like what happened in Oakland California recently uh, they're met with less than lethal shotgun bullets from police and tear gas and other chemical agents. So the government is definitely cracking down, and I think this whole cyber terrorism thing is just one more aspect of that. Now, um, is this an example then of a line that is blurring between online protester and online terrorists? Well, I think here's the thing the government has always had some control over. Uh, you know, television media and radio media, but with the internet, there is no control. Uh, it's kind of anarchic if you think about it, and it's totally democratic also. Uh, if something has merit, it rises to the top and people find out about it, uh, even if those truths are inconvenient. And uh, in response, we're seeing all kinds of legislation to crack down on this. We saw SOPA, uh, and now the same guy is introducing H.R. 1981, a surveillance bill. And I think they're just trying to dismantle the internet, basically. They don't want it to remain this international 
uh, free thing where people can transfer information and people can, uh, you know, self-organize. So I think they're doing everything in their power to stop the Internet in its current form. Um, and, you know, uh, as you just mentioned, we are seeing laws, for example, the National Defense Authorization Act um, that passed recently, which Congress um, and Congress also tried to push through the SOPA bill, and that's ga aimed at gaining control over the Internet. Um, now we have um, these new fears for, uh, over cyber war. In the wake of all this, what does it mean for the fundamental rights and civil, civil liberties for U.S. citizens? Well, Liz, this is all just icing on the cake. NDAA was the big thing, and that's already been signed into law, uh, nullifying a large portion of our Bill of Rights for American citizens. And at this point, they just want to censor the Internet and control the Internet so that protests against NDAA and against some other government injustices don't go mainstream. And uh, when you turn on TV right now on some of the other networks, uh, what you see, instead of seeing information about NDAA, or information about uh, you know, SOPA and HR 1981, and people asking, why don't we investigate uh, people like Representative Lamar Smith, who wrote SOPA, uh, and some of these other damaging bills. Instead of seeing that on the news, you're seeing like three-hour feeds of Whitney Houston's funeral, uh, a, a person's funeral, instead of seeing the funeral of our democracy. And uh, that's, it's just the whole thing is weird. I don't really understand what's happening here. I certainly don't either. David, pleasure to have you on the show. As always, that was journalist and host of The DL Show, David Seaman.